What is your favorite thing to do? Mine is drawing or painting or just making art. I love to create. The book we're reading today tells the story of Aaron who struggles to learn how to read because of the way his brain is wired. The wires in his brain make it challenging for him to learn sounds and letters and match those two together. And that makes it hard to read. But Aaron has a superpower. And it's his ability to tell stories with his words and his pictures. He says, you know what? I am going to keep learning how to read. I'm going to keep working on this till I figure it out. But in the meantime, I'm going to use my superpower. Come on and read with me. And let's find out how it goes with Aaron as he practices his superpower. Aaron Slater, Illustrator by Andrea Beatty. Illustrated by David Roberts. At the end of the garden, in the soft fading light, when the day turns to dusk and the dusk into night, the sweet scent of jasmine floats into the air to mix with the music of laughter. And there, Aaron D. Slater soaks it all in with his flowery blanket tucked under his chin. Words drift like music, melodious, mild, a sweet summer song for a sweet summer child who drifts off to sleep as the cottonwoods sway at the end of the garden at the end of the day. It's summer, then summer, and summer once more. And soon, Aaron D. is a youngster of four. The jasmine climbs higher, the roses have grown, and Aaron himself has a spot of his own for seedlings and saplings beside the slate walk which he illustrates daily with a bucket of chalk. But what he loves most, and what makes Aaron's heart sing, is to listen to books in the old garden swing. To write stories, he thinks, is the greatest of things. But first he must read. It's the best place to start. And young Aaron wants to with all of his heart. But the words are just squiggles, and try though he might, even with help, Aaron can't get it right. Why can't I do it? Why is it so hard? He goes back to drawing on slate in his yard. It's school time at last, in his sunflower socks and poppy red jacket with matching lunchbox. He marches to class with a teacher's bouquet ready to read by the end of the day. But he doesn't that day, or that month, or that year. And though he makes progress, it's painfully clear. He'll never quite get it, like all of his friends. Since he'll never stand out, he decides to blend in. And so here he is at the start of grade two, in his simple white t-shirt and matching white shoes. He tries to keep up, to blend in, and to hide the tangle of feelings he carries inside. At first, it goes well, since his teacher is new and a bit overwhelmed <laughs> by the hullabaloo. But things settle down and Miss Greer finds her stride. And once she gets rolling, there's no place to hide. Class, she says, Here's an assignment for you. Write me a story. Write something true. And so Aaron does what young Aaron must do. He works on his story like the rest of grade two. He writes through the evening. He writes through the night. He writes and he writes till the dawn's early light. Then he drags off to school with his shoes filled with lead and his stomach in knots and a pain in his head. And he waits for his turn with his heart filled with dread. Miss Greer calls his name and Aaron D. stands and unfolds the sheet in his trembling hands and he reads, well he tries, but it's so hard to start with 33 eyes peering into his heart. So he stares at his shoes and his sunflower socks, then closes his eyes, and then young Aaron talks. Once, well, 
once there was a flower. No, wait, I know. Once there was a magical flower, which gave all who held it extraordinary power. And so begins the most perfect of tales of an imperfect hero whose courage fails. When the day turns to dusk and the dusk into night and the moon rises high and the dragons take flight. And who learns after all in the wee morning hours, strength comes from the heart and not magical powers. The beauty and kindness and loving and art Lend courage to all with a welcoming heart. And when the quest ends and the sweet flower dies, the students all gasp, and Miss Lila Greer cries. The silence that follows rattles his heart. He tries to say something, but where could he start? He turns in a paper with no words at all, then blinks back a tear and escapes to the hall where Miss Lila finds him by the slate-colored wall. Time stops for them both, the teacher and boy. His heart fills with anguish. And hers? Hers fills with joy at the soul of this artist, courageous and true. She smiles and whispers, Aaron, thank you. When she leaves, Aaron stands there a very long while, then slowly, so slowly, he begins to smile. And he feels like he does with those books on the swing as a new hope inside starts to make his heart sing. He knows he can do the greatest of things in a way that's his own, in a way that's just his. He can stand out and show the whole world who he is. Like the mightiest flames that banish the dark, hope grows in the soul from the tiniest spark. His art makes the difference. His art leads the way and helps him discover what he wants to say. And his reading gets better. Well, of course it's still tough, but each day that they work is a little less rough. Like all imperfect heroes at the start of a quest, he must do what he can and hope for the best. Now in the hallway, a new garden grows with jasmine and poppies, a rambling rose, books, art, and music. A dragon or two who soar through a sky of delphinium blue. The art tells a story, melodious, mild, furious, fragrant, wonderful, wild. It's all from the heart, and all of it's true for Aaron, Miss Greer, and the kids of grade two. It's a place full of beauty for one and for all, the illustrator's garden at the end of the hall. Were you as inspired by Aaron as I was? He has something that's really challenging for him, learning to read, but he keeps trying and he keeps trying and he's getting better every day. But he still gets to practice and do the thing that he loves, which is drawing and telling stories. So I wonder about you. Do you have something that you are amazing at? You are so good. It's your superpower. And do you have something that is hard for you to do, that you struggle with, that you're working on, but it's just hard? Isn't that cool that all humans have that? For me, I had a hard time when I was a kid with math. And even today, I sometimes have to ask some friends to help me with things if I get stuck. But I'm always learning and trying things out. I'm also really good at drawing and making art and being creative. That's my superpower and that's the thing that I'm growing in. What if we could do something kind of like what Aaron did? Maybe we could get two sheets of paper and on one paper we could draw a portrait of ourselves doing something that's hard. So I would sit down and I would draw a picture of Lauren working on math 
and practicing numbers and figuring things out. And on my other piece of paper, I could draw a picture of Lauren drawing and illustrating and making art and being creative. Could you do that? Could you grab some colored pencils or crayons or markers and a couple sheets of paper and make a drawing or two showing the thing that you're working on learning and also the thing that's your superpower? Let's celebrate being awesome human beings and draw pictures of things that we're getting better at and the thing that we are amazing at already. I hope you enjoyed reading with me today. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up so that other boys and girls can find this story and listen to it. I would love if you would subscribe to this channel so that you don't miss out on any stories together with me. Thanks for joining me today, and I hope I see you again soon.